of the air we breathe and the water we use is a subject of continuing concern to all of us. It is a subject we cannot avoid. For all of us, by the fact that we live and breathe, are sufferers from, and contributors to, pollution. Wherever a summer rain washes loose soil into a stream, wherever fuel is burned to generate power, wherever new construction disturbs the lay of the land, the inevitable, unavoidable result is pollution. About one-sixth of the total air pollution we contend with in this country can be traced to industrial processes. Improvement is difficult because a rapidly growing population demands an ever-increasing volume of manufactured products. Nevertheless, progress is being made. A leader and pioneer in the movement to stem the rising tide of air and water pollution is the steel industry. The making of smoke was once an inseparable part of the making of iron and steel. But by the start of the 20th century, simple dust catchers, the earliest form of air quality control, were being installed on blast furnaces. Research and willingness to commit major resources to minimize the pollution problems of steel making have brought dramatic progress. Air is vastly cleaner around steel mills today as a result of the hundreds of millions of dollars the steel companies have spent to develop and install cleaning systems. These complex and expensive facilities, many of which are 99% effective in removing dust particles, have brought vast improvements in the air environment of the nation's steel producing cities. Another major improvement has been brought about by the rapid conversion to the basic oxygen process. This system permits the objectionable airborne products of the steel making process to be collected and precipitated from the air before it is returned to the atmosphere. Almost half of all the steel produced in the United States is made this way now, and the percentage increases each year. Air quality control systems on the BOFs and other types of steel making furnaces capture thousands of tons of particulate matter so that it never enters the air. These devices are expensive to build, operate, and maintain. They make no dollars and cents return on the investment, but they provide indisputable evidence that the steel industry is doing something effective about air pollution. Another basic raw material of steel making is water. For years now, since the 1930s, steel companies have been conducting research programs to develop the systems and equipment necessary to improve water quality. Large intake facilities are required to meet the water needs of a basic steel producing plant. For every ton of finished steel produced, something like 20,000 gallons are needed for cleaning and cooling purposes. For example, mill scale, which forms on the surface of hot steel, is removed with high pressure water. The scale and water goes into settling pits. The scale settles out and is recovered. Huge clarifiers trap and remove oil, sludge, and other potentially harmful ingredients. Excess heat is dissipated in large cooling towers. The result is clear, clean water, which can be recycled back into the mill for another round or discharged into a lake or stream where more often than not it enhances water quality. Settling basins, thickeners, scale pits, filters, separators, waste lagoons. All of these have a single purpose, to make American steel plants examples of one industry's efforts to help preserve our nation's waterways for all the purposes they must serve today and for generations to come. The American steel industry's investment in clean air and water is rapidly approaching two billion dollars. The return is not measurable in dollars and cents. It is measurable in a better human environment. We are proud of our progress. It will continue.